All right, we will call to order the Historic District Commission meeting for Summersworth for Wednesday, July 26th at 7 p.m. First on the agenda, approval of minutes of May 24th, 2023 and June 28th, 2023. Richard. I still have not had a chance to do the minutes like I discussed last time and uh, I see minutes for June but not May in the packet so I'll make a motion to accept the minutes for June at least. I'll second that motion. All right we have a motion and we have a second for approval of the June 28th as written. Matt? Oh, no, okay all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes and we will table May 2024 meeting minutes. Next on the agenda, projects of minimal impact report. 53 uh, Mount Vernon Street received a permit to replace the existing roof. 50 Maple Street received a permit to construct a 12 by 8 foot shed and 50 Maple Street received a permit to install an above ground swimming pool. And that is all. Thank you. At this time, we will open up comments for um, pu public comments. If you would like to come up and say anything at this time, please do so. If it's for a project, you can hold until we get to the project. <laughs> All right, seeing there are none, we'll move on to old business. Any old business to come before the commission tonight? All right, seeing there is none, we will move on to new business. First on the agenda, Alexander Shaw is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install seamless gutters with downspouts and guards and to make minor repairs to fascia for a property located at 53 Mount Vernon Street. Yep. So the applicant is proposing to complete minor carpentry work to the fascia and repair the rotted sections. Also in to install the five inch seamless gutters with downspouts and guards on sections of the house. He has provided some extra photos. Those are been av made available on your desk tonight. The property received two historic applications. One most recently in 2023 to replace the roof and one in 2004 to remove shingles, install drip edge and install new shingles. Thank you. And if you would like to come up and talk about the project. And we just make sure the green light's on and that you state your name for the record. Uh, Alexander Shaw. Uh, I just moved into 50 me 53 Mount Vernon Street with my sister last year. We're currently trying to repair anything that seems to be of a utmost importance. Um, currently, we're trying to install gutters. Um, like I said, there's there are five inch seamless gutters. Uh, we currently have a contractor who is waiting to get approval from you guys. Uh, again, there's additional photos of the water damage that's been happening because of the lack of gutters. Um, and right now we're just mostly trying to take care of that, make sure that there's nothing that's going to increase like water damage to the house, whether it's leaking in or damaging the outside, basically. All right, I will open up to questions from board members. Nope. Matt? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, just wondering if you could describe the gutters to us. Um, I, I definitely see the description in here, but I just like, could you give me a description of what mm -hmm. they're made out of? Are they like color? I assume they'll be white and match the trim, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, they would be 32 gauge gutters, aluminum. Um, I believe that they would be white, so they would be matching the house as well. Great, and um, another question if that's all right. Um, do you plan as well to replace some of the ratted sections? And if so, will you be using um, the same uh, wood uh, clapboards that you have uh, on the house? Um, that would be something that I'd want to talk to my contractor about, but I would do my best to make sure that it is like the same type of wood and that it would you know, reflect what is already there. Okay, great, thank you, much appreciated. Um, is that a part of the application or, or not? Is it, are we just focusing on the gutters? I just wanna clarify. They, okay. they do require um, 
uh, replacing and repairing that section, so cutting out a section of that part of the roof so that they can install the gutters on, over on top of it. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah I, again, I think my only hang up would be that any part is that, that is cut out is replaced in kind with the same um, wood um, and you know made to match because there are definitely some interesting you know unique historic details on parts of this house and so I would want it to still look uh, the same way I wouldn't want, you know, yeah. a flat board to go over some of those beautiful dentals above the windows or anything like that. So, yeah. thanks. All right. Any other questions from board members? George? I'll just make a comment, and I don't have any problem with this at all. Uh, what is a terrible thing for a house? It can do a lot of damage. Um, so I get this, and I'm good with it. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Liz. Hi. I just um, I saw in the application that you didn't plan to put gutters everywhere. Can you just describe where the gutters would go? Uh, they'd be going on to the main part of the building. We have an uh, addition in the back and also on the garage right now. But financially right now, we are just focusing on the main building. OK. Any other questions? Yes, Matt. Um, when thinking about the main building, will you have them around that bay window, or will it just be along the roof edge above the second floor? For now, it's just on the main roof edge above the bay window. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Do we have any motions? Oop. A motion that we accept the proposal, but I would add a caveat that the gutters need to be white, so that they fit in with the the house, because it's not specified. But we would ask that they fit in with the. I would ask that they fit in with the character of the house and not be something different than white. I know we can't address color. Exactly. However, I'd ask that they be matching. He says he was is willing to do them white. I would ask that they be matching. Um, so, for our interpretation, I will say. Uh, to match with a uh, current facade of that building? That would work. Okay. We have a motion to um, accept proposal as written with the caveat of gutters to match current facade. Um, Richard? Second. And we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, um, any other new business that may be come before the commission? All right, seeing there is none, we will move on to workshop business. Any workshop business for the commission tonight? All right, I will bring one up. All of you should have um, handouts at your station. Um, I mentioned a couple meetings to go uh, that I would like us to move forward with a plaque system for Summer's Worth. And in talking with um, another member of a different historical um, commission, they had one in place, but it was actually housed with their historical society, um, and that the fees and all of that was gone through that system. I have given you an example of their write-up. Um, I know that I mentioned I'd like to have a workshop around this and have invite some of the historic um, historic society members to join us to talk this through because it would be put into their hands in partnership with us. And I hope that George could represent that team, but also invite others. So, yeah, as long as the commission is uh, in, in line with that move. I think this is a great idea. Yeah, I think this pairs really nicely with the um, placards that are going around the city and the state historic markers we're getting. We, I think one's coming this summer, like very soon. So um, this, it goes right in line with that. And again, the city has kind of over the past year or two really dedicated itself to doing some signage. So I think this fits right in line, so love it. All right, so we will get that scheduled. Um, do we want to have 
volunteers for this workshop or do we want to wait till next month? I'm happy to attend, um, but yeah, I feel like it, are you, I guess I'm, my question is, is like, are we thinking we just like post it as something that anyone's welcome to come and talk about or are we looking for a specific, like are we looking to form like a subcommittee? Um, I like the committee's um, take on that. Do we think a subcommittee needs to be formed for this or do we think that it could be done within one or two sessions? I think it's gonna be more of the communication with the historical society and seeing what their take on it is. I like <coughs> Kind of like uh, Matt's idea with the uh, open, that maybe we could run it by the residents of the uh, district, or at least, excuse me, let them know that they want to come down and give their two cents. Well, we're more than willing to, to hear it. Okay, so we can look into scheduling with City Hall to have that and when that would work out best and then plan accordingly. Yeah. Right. Thank you. All right. Any other workshop business from the board? All right, we will move on to communications and miscellaneous. Um, I am going to say a statement and then I will open it up to other board members. I found out some information um, around July 16th for the first incident and then I was made aware of another incident which I believe most people in the city have now become aware of. I will tell you, I went through the full gambit of emotions when I heard about this incident. We had one of our patrons, um, one of our store owners, and one of our previous council members attacked twice within our community. This literally infuriated me. I was very upset. It was made me start questioning our community. It made me very, I can't even go into a lot of the emotions I have because I am still feeling a lot of those. As more information came out about these incidences, I was very much happy to understand that those involved were not necessarily residents of our city and our community. One of the things though that keeps nagging at me with this is why did these people feel like they could come into our community and do such a heinous crime and do it twice? I am very upset by this. I was very touched by all of the outrage I saw online. I, it gave me more faith in our community back within a short period of time, I will say. In the morning, I was very upset, started to get less upset by the outrage I was seeing. But I will say, I don't think this is just a social media support. To me, this is a call to action. Somebody outside our community came in and attacked our community. I think it's great to see the social media posts but I think that this particular incident is a point in our city where we're gonna go one of two ways. We're either gonna go backwards, because we're already seeing it, we already have an empty storefront from this incident. And if we don't come together as a community and take action, we will see more of that. We will not be able to get economic people to come here and grow their businesses. People will not wanna come here because they don't feel safe. So that is one way. Another way that we will go based on this incident is we will move forward and we will set that line in the sand going, hate is not tolerated and it will never be tolerated. So I have already told council, I will be coming to speak to this as part of their meeting. I encourage anybody who knows anything about this incident to help with the investigation. I think that the police are doing everything that they should be doing. I do feel like that there's no way that these are not connected considering it was the same residence, the same facility that it happened to within a two week time period. And I very much hope that they are prosecuted to the full extent of the law because there's no way in my mind this does not raise to a hate crime. And I just am very happy to see other people take this and I hope that it just grows and it goes the way I'm hoping for our community. So for any of you not aware, this affected William Poole and his partner they are no longer open. I hope, as others, I'm sure, that possibly we can get them to reconsider this with us as a community coming together and supporting them. That is my hope for us, but honestly, I 
think the damage might have been done in this case, but we can grow from it and hopefully move forward. And that is my hope. So I will open in the chair, the floor up to other communications and miscellaneous. Matt. Thank you, Laura. Um, yeah, I feel very similarly. I echo everything that you've said. Um, I thank you for emailing me and alerting me about this originally yesterday. Um, uh, prior to when it was released in the news and the press. Um, it is disgusting. It is scary. I mean, as a gay man who lives in this community, to think that my family could be threatened in a similar fashion as this uh, family freaks me the hell out. And, um, but I think the only thing that we can do is just at this time, or at least I shouldn't say the only thing, but one of the most important things we can do is just give support to the two of them and just you know, express as loudly as possible that this community does not tolerate that type of behavior, that type of hate. Um, again, I, like you said, I've been really pleased to see the level of support that uh, has been expressed across this city. Uh, it really reminded me why I think we call Summer Resort the welcoming city. Um, I think a lot of folks came out in droves online or in person uh, to show how much they care about William and Lauren and about their business and uh, just about them being valued community members. I mean, even just walking here today, um, I walked past the store and there were like bouquets of flowers outside their door like that speaks volumes to me and just makes me feel so good to see um but i mean this is what day one really 24 hours if that after it broke and at, you know barely over 24 hours after uh the incident occurred and i just hope that much more than just community love is uh, is done. I, I, again, it's a, it's the, it is the most heartwarming start to what could have been such an awful and is such an awful story. But this is, as you said, where we rewrite it. This is where we take the time as a community to come together and say, absolutely not. No way. Not in our home. Not to our neighbors. Not to the people that we care about. And make sure that this doesn't happen again. Um, I was on the phone all day yesterday uh, with folks, and I, I am really hopeful that there will be a strong unified message at city um, council next meeting, um, not just from the <laughs> counselors, but from the community. I know a number of people are coming to just show their support. Um, I encourage everybody to do so. I would love nothing more than our meeting to run long just because people came to show the love for William and Lauren. Um, that would really mean a lot to me and to them, I hope. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanna at least let folks know there is a GoFundMe out there for them. Uh, it's another great first step. Um, so if folks are interested, uh, it's online. At GoFundMe, type in William and Lauren and it will come up in the on the GoFundMe page. Um, I think we're, or they're nearly at like $20,000 right now, which is amazing. Um, but again, I think many of us know um, money can do a lot, but it can't heal trauma like that. So I, I really wish them the best and hope that they have, you know, people around them that can help them heal from this because I don't know if I would be able to, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. Um, I have some other things too that are unrelated to this, but I want to open the floor back up to others if folks wanted to talk about it too. Yes, it will go back around for others. So. Any other comments on this particular one before we move to others? George? I, I, just, uh, I just feel terrible about it. But uh, I just want to say I hope these guys are punished to the fullest extent of the law. Uh, if there's a hate crime, this is it. And I hope Semmersworth can send a message out that we're not going to tolerate it. So, thank you. Yes, Adam. <clears throat> um, I mirror everybody's sentiments in this room tonight. It was absolutely horrible when I heard about it. Um, to your point and George's point about um, 
the extent of the law being followed. If everybody involved is found to be a minor, I hope it then carries over to the parents of these kids because this all starts in the home. And if they don't do anything about it at the root of the problem, it's just going to continue. So I hope that they do something to really make it be felt to the violators and that it is going to send a, a loud and clear message that, um, yeah, it's not a joke. All right. All right, thank you all. And then I think we can open it up to other communications and miscellaneous because I do know we have others. Matt? Thank you. Um, one thing, I'm going to pass a few things out. Some pictures. Um, oh, I ran a piece of paper. Open that that way. Um, I was reached out to by Dina Gagnon, who owns the Gathering Place, uh, about a mural that she has approval from her landlord uh, to put oh, up. Nice. So this would go along the um, <laughs> I'll share. Uh, retaining wall in front of the business is at 154 High Street. Um, and again, uh, thanks, yeah. Um, so, what's that? Oh, you already had? Oh, you're so good, I didn't know that. <laughs> you're amazing. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to bring it up. I, uh, she reached out to me. I'm hoping to be involved with the project because, as you can tell, my house is literally in the background of the photo, so I live there, so it will be something I uh, will see often, too. Um, but with it not being, you know, it's just a painting project. It's not like they're not doing anything to the wall. They're not changing the wall other than painting it. And again, we don't have purview over paint, but we wanted to at least, or she wanted to bring it forward to the city to make sure everything was okay with uh, the city and with us. And so just wanted to show it to you all, get feedback if you have any. Um, the way she described it is certainly the lettering um, is just to show the size of it on that retaining wall um, and how the letters are going to grow with uh, the retaining wall as the height of the retaining wall grows. Um, and she says the style is going to be very similar to the one um, mural that you see below. Um, something similar. They don't have a final design yet. Um, but I figured better to bring it up earlier so that any thoughts or ideas could get incorporated early on. Um, if you have no thoughts, that's great. I'll tell her to move forward. If you do, I'll happily share those. But just wanted to throw it out there to folks since this is coming soon. I'm completely in favor of this. I consider this a beautification. Um, again, you're not changing the wall, the fundamentals of the wall. This is something that if they choose later can be taken down no problem with this whatsoever and I'd love to know more because if they need volunteers I will greatly volunteer. I would agree I think it is a great thing um, I just wonder why they couldn't do it on the building and make it more prominent yeah. and where you would see it coming up high street That's just true. just a creative criticism I guess. Wasn't there didn't there used to be a sign on that corner that said welcome to Summersworth? It used to say historic Summersworth even. Where did it go? It that might have been one that fell and ended up in City Hall. And I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I think this is a great idea. I, I echo the sentiment that it should be even bigger and bolder because I feel like there should be something on that corner that says, you know, welcome to town. And there, there used to be and there isn't anymore as far as I can tell. Any other comments or questions for Matt? Liz? Um, oh, I love it. I think it's great, and I look forward to seeing the next iterations as they develop the design. Um, it they may need some sort of coating on the like parging on the wall to help it adhere. I don't, I don't, I trust that they're working. You know, some people who've done the murals in Rochester will, will know more about that, but I just didn't know if that was something that required approval if they need to do like a kind of parging on the surface to make it work. Um, I think that's one of those gray areas, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. <laughs> Definitely a great idea. <laughs> Thanks. I will pass that all on to that. I do have one more thing, but i got to find it. So if anyone else has to. I guess we'll move something. to George and come back. Perfect. George? You were showing me on your phone. You had a communication. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I just want to sorry about that. How about um, talk about the uh, that litigated house of poetry? Sorry. 
what is House of Hope up off of uh, Grand and Grove uh, that they came before us when they opened and they did a real nice job of putting windows and trim and uh, painting the place up. Uh, the only thing they forgot was the uh, trim around the top window. Uh, if you look at the front of the building, right in the uh, gable there, right in the end, is a uh, window that has no trim around it. And it's just black from where the paper was. Uh, the window's there, but there's no trim, and they never put it there. Uh, we did ask them, I believe, to put one on the porch that they did. Uh, they made up and, and put that in there, which was great. Looked great, fantastic. But uh, you know, I, I just walk up there every day and I look at it and I'm like, I, I just can't believe that there's no trim on it after all this time. Just thought I'd mention it. Okay. So we'll ask that code enforcement look into that for us, and then I believe um, you have some further uh, comments from Tim in absentia. Yes, so Tim and Tevier, um expressed that he was unable to attend the meeting tonight, but did provide that he was going to ask for updates on window signage violations on Market Street storefronts, the block wall that is supposed to be stone veneer on Winter Street, missing shutters on the four multifamily buildings on Market Street, replacing them was an HDC approval condition when the siding was repaired, missing direction signage for the borderline beverage where site plan approval included do not enter and no left turn signs that have been missing for some time and inquired if the new sign and style of the sign come before the board or approved as minimal impacts for the hall of great falls building um, so we will share those with code compliance officer as well um, the Hall of Great Falls sign, I do believe, was approved in 2019, though. So, I'm, But we will still share it for him to research. Thank you. And Matt? Two more, actually. Um, one is City Council did approve the historic markers that will be city uh, purchased, so not the state ones, but the city level ones. Um, one was removed uh, at the, I think it was at the committee level um, but the following locations will get uh, the city historic signs which are quite exciting so we're going to do um, Central Park uh, right by Will and Pond entrance um, there's going to be one at outside 45 Market Street Bakery for that building and the history with the murder that's there um, the Fred Brown building so there will be one outside uh, Summersworth Historic Museum uh, Great Falls Manufacturing Company is going to have one outside uh, the entrance to Canal Street. Uh, City Hall is going to have a plaque uh, related to our unique name. Um, Noble Pines is going to have one. Uh, General Electric Building is going to have one right outside of Clara's entrance. And then uh, Citizens Place is going to have one. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight we approved. Um, again, program is hope it, it can grow so we would love some ideas I brought up the suggestions we had um, but since we had to remove one already we weren't able to add more on because we were already kind of at where our budget was I think so hopefully in future years we can put some more up which would be exciting um, my second update is that at council um, there was some discussion in closing comments from other counselors about our decision at the last meeting uh, some folks were disappointed in us as a board, to be perfectly honest, about um, our uh, disapproval of the Elm Street property and their redesign. Um, and the biggest point of discussion was around how we and our rules are unable to look at financial impact as one of our decisions, or, or in making our decision. Um, which uh, some counselors brought up the like, idea of maybe having some sort of uh, committee meeting or meeting amongst the board and the council uh, to discuss altering our uh, rules to allow us to consider financial impact. Um, I certainly spoke to, this, uh, to that meeting. Uh, I wanna let you all know I defended our decision because I was right there with you all and felt like we did a pretty good job. I was very pleased with our decision. Um, I'm but one counselor though, <laughs> um, but uh, I also said that if there were to be some sort of uh, committee meeting or 
you know, joint meeting uh, that I would hope that we would be invited <laughs> so that we could also be a part of the discussion. I think that would only be fair. Um, whether something will or will not come from that, I don't know, but certainly multiple counselors expressed interest in that, so we shall see. But I will update you as I learn more. Um, but that's, those are my two updates. Thank you, because if it didn't come up, I was going to be asking. <laughs> um, and I will say, me personally, yes, I will always attend a committee if we come to the front of that committee. But I will also say they better come prepared with very good arguments for it. Because, again, we can't just look at it from a commercial large capacity. They need to look at it from a homeowner capacity as well. And what does that entail? They need to have a very good argument for both cases, not just the larger. So. I certainly would like to be in attendance. Yeah, definitely. I would hope we would all get an invite. <laughs> and if we don't, I will send it out. <laughs> Thank you for the update. All right. Any other communication or miscellaneous? Um, I did forget to bring up, oh, unless, no. Um, Richard would like to step down as the secretary of the HDC. Um, so we will be looking for a volunteer to be the secretary in his stead. Um, I think our notes have been taken care of tonight, luckily. <laughs> so um, if we want to vote tonight, that is fine, or we can do that first thing next meeting to give people some time, because we do have to have that position filled. So I will take that up to the board to which one they prefer. Okay, so hearing crickets, um, <laughs> it's one of those, uh, if we don't come with one tonight, be prepared to have someone nominated next meeting and that they will jump right into the role. So, all right, crickets, exactly. New person should probably take care of it. I mean, that's totally fair, right? Well, I will say that um, they have to be a full-time member, which we do have an opening as a full-time member, so an alternate definitely can take that on because they can become a full-time member to hold that position. So if they would like to think about it and come back. Because <laughs> we have two. One is in absentia today, so I would prefer when the whole board is here to do this. So I will say let's wait till next time so people have time to adjust, think about it, and then maybe we'll voluntold somebody. <laughs> so, all right. That was my last communication. Any others? All right, do we have any motions? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn, and we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Aye.